What is your racial identity? If your parents are of the same race, this is a relatively easy question to answer. However, if you're biracial, like Meghan Markle and myself, it's a bit more complicated. Do you identify with your mom's race, your dad's race, or both races? This is an important question because the biracial population is increasing at an exponential rate. Biracial individuals made up, of, made up 9 million people in the U.S. alone in 2010. In 2060, this population will have tripled to 54 million people in the U.S. This is if you fill the FSU stadium almost 700 times. Biracial identity is important because it has, impl because it has implications for individuals' mental health and their interactions with others. If biracial individuals have a racial identity conflict, then if counselors better understood how they formed their racial identity, they could better create strategies to meet their biracial clients' needs. Additionally, our racial identity influences our interactions with others. Generally, we interact more positively with people of the same race we identify with and more negatively with people of a different race that we don't identify with. So by understanding biracial identity and what influences it, we can un better understand strategies to help biracial individuals' mental health and to understand their interactions with others. So this is what I set out to investigate with my master's thesis. Previous literature has demonstrated that biracial, biracial identity is influenced by a couple of things. How others perceive and identify ourselves, like people commonly perceive me to be white, how close the biracial individual is to members of the racial groups. The closer they are to members of a racial group, the more they identify with that group. And kind of the inverse, if they face discrimination from a group. If they face discrimination from a particular racial group, they're less likely to identify with that racial group. What I noticed with this previous theory is that it was all societal external influences. The biracial individual is seen to be a passive recipient. But we know human beings are very dynamic, and biracial individuals are no different. Therefore, I hypothesize that biracial individuals influenced their identification with their own actions, specifically their in actions to engage with the culture associated with one of their racial groups. For instance, when Meghan Markle had a black choir at her wedding, it was more likely that she was highly identifying as black. So I set out to test this in two studies, the first of which replicated previous work, the second of which extended by incorporating cultural engagement as a factor. We tested this with 122 biracial individuals. They answered a well-established measure of identification in psychology and measures of the different influencers. Once we had our data, we regressed the influencer scores onto their identification scores. And as it turns out, several factors emerged as significant. If they were perceived as being of a race, they were more likely to identify with that race. And inversely, if they were not perceived of being at that race, they were less likely to identify with that race. If they were close with members of a racial group, then they were more likely to identify with that racial group. Happily, discrimination was not a significant influencer on their identification, but cultural engagement was. The more they engaged with the culture associated with one of their racial groups, the more they identified with their racial group. Biracial identity is influenced by a mix of societal and personal factors. By understanding this, counselors can better devise strategies to meet their biracial clients' needs, and we can better understand biracial individuals' behavior. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle.